I've been seeing a lot of worried posts on social media these past few weeks, especially from parts of the Northern Hemisphere where the temperature has a tendency to get a little low at this time of year. I'm not talking about the folks who are worried that the roads aren't being cleared or salted, nor am I talking about the folks who are worried about the fact that their new puppy doesn't like pooping outside when it's blowing a gale. I'm talking about the folks who've purchased a new or used, new to them, EV in the last year, for whom this is the first time they'll be driving an EV in colder temperatures. The folks who are worried that something is wrong with their car because its range estimate seems unusually low, or perhaps worry that there's something wrong with their car's battery pack because suddenly charging takes a lot longer. If you're an established EV owner who has been through multiple winters with an electric car, you might be tempted to inappropriately break out your 1980s synth and piano combo to recreate your very best impression of Bruce Hornsby in the comments section. And in addition to being a really inappropriate use of an actually woke song, I'm talking about the original meaning of the term, being aware of and fighting against social and racial inequities. If you don't actually explain why things are sometimes less awesome for EVs in the winter, your little singing effort may not have the best impact. So today I'm going to try and provide some context to winter life with an EV, explain why you can improve your vehicle's performance by keeping it plugged in whenever possible, and explain just what's going on when range and some other things don't behave the way you're used to. I guess the easiest way to start this video is to reassure the majority of you watching who are having your first winter with an EV that almost certainly nothing is wrong with your car. Most vehicles, electric and otherwise, suffer reduced range in winter. That's down to a bunch of factors that affect both battery and non-battery vehicles. To save a whole bunch of time, I'm going to bullet point them here. Cold air is more dense than warm air, meaning it uses a little more energy to push your car through it. The road conditions tend to be less than ideal, which leads to higher rolling resistance between your tyres and the road, which in turn uses more energy. You tend to use the heating to keep the cabin warm, which also eats into the energy stored in your car's battery pack. Depending on whether you have a heat pump or not, the impact of this can be quite significant. In contrast, internal combustion engines produce enormous amounts of waste heat that aren't used for anything else, so internal combustion engine vehicles can heat the cabin for free with little impact on their fuel efficiency. However, because internal combustion engines have to run with a richer mixture in cold weather in order to operate, they actually end up running more inefficiently anyway. Oh, and because batteries, both 12 volt old fashioned lead acid style and the fancy pants traction battery packs found in EVs, both tend to be a little sluggish in cold weather, you will find both accessory batteries might require additional support from an alternator in an internal combustion engine or your DC to DC converter in your EV. Of course, I've just covered the basics, but I should note internal combustion engine vehicles kept outside also end up using a little fuel every morning when you defrost them. And so too do battery electric vehicles kept outside. They just used electrical energy rather than chemical energy. But as I'm about to detail, there's a big, big difference that we EV owners can take advantage of. As I suspect you're now aware, winter driving results in lower efficiency regardless of vehicle type. And I'm going to come to ways in which in an EV, you and I have some pretty big boss moves that we can pull to dramatically increase efficiency. However, I should also deal right now with the mastodon in the room. Mastodon because fossil fuels are prehistoric. Even though internal combustion engines are incredibly inefficient, with barely an average of 20% of the energy stored in their fuel being used to actually power the vehicle down the road, fossil fuels are 
also incredibly energy dense. One US gallon of gasoline is equivalent to 33.4 kilowatt hours of energy. And even if we account for the inefficiencies of the internal combustion engine system, we're still left with just over 6.6 usable kilowatt hours of energy per gallon of gasoline. Because of this, even though internal combustion engine vehicles suffer similar drops in energy efficiency in winter to battery electric vehicles, you're less likely to notice in an everyday driving scenario because you're not stopping and filling up every day. A small city EV, for example, with a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack, it's driving on the real world equivalent of about six usable US gallons of gasoline well under the one half of what an equivalent sized internal combustion engine vehicle would have traditionally on board if its fuel tank was full. But EVs, they do have advantages. And here is where you let the first time winter EV owners into the secret world of preconditioning. Most EVs have the ability to precondition their cabin from power provided by the charging station. I would normally say mains power at this point, but someone very politely commented recently that it's not a universally accepted term around the world. So I'm just going to stick with the power provided by whatever charging station you're plugged into. You can precondition an EV, heat up the cabin and defrost the windows in winter or cool the interior down in summer using its battery pack too. But the important thing to note here is that using the battery will reduce the amount of available power left for the car to use to drive along the road. Keeping your vehicle plugged in overnight means that in the morning, when you get up, you can precondition the car using external power rather than internal power. Better still, it's possible to do this with most EVs without subscribing to the smartphone connected application that invariably requires you to part with your hard earned money for full functionality. The Chevrolet Bolt, for example, can turn its preconditioning on if you hit the lock button on the remote and then press and hold the start button on the remote. Most other EVs I've driven have similar arrangements, but Interestingly, the Ford F-150 Lightning doesn't have that functionality on its key fob. At least I haven't found that. But you can use the Bluetooth connectivity in the free smartphone app, even if you're not subscribed to Ford's telematic service to start your vehicle. That's as long as you are within reach of the vehicle and its Bluetooth module. If you've been noticing that your range hasn't been as good recently and you don't keep your EV plugged in at night, this is likely part of the reason. Preconditioning your cabin takes energy. And if you're not using an external power source, you're pulling energy from the internal battery pack. Moreover, basic physics states that it takes more energy to raise or lower the temperature of something than it does to keep that same thing at a constant temperature. So preconditioning your car before departure, then keeping the interior at a constant temperature actually uses less energy than turning it off, letting the car get super cold and then turning it back on again when it becomes unbearable. That's the cabin bit. But what about the rest of your vehicle? Well, many EVs today have some form of battery pack heating and these battery pack heaters can also ensure good winter performance. In fact, if your car has battery pack heating, it may choose to keep the battery pack above freezing using the same power drawn from the grid that you use to keep the cabin warm. Most current EV battery chemistries like to be kept at, at the kind of temperatures that we humans like. And when EV traction pack batteries get cold, they are far less willing to give up the energy stored within. Keeping them warm, which most modern EVs will do, alleviates that problem. But if you don't plug your car in, it's then forced to use energy stored in its pack to keep itself warm, meaning you get less energy stored to whoosh you down the road. Want to see it in action? Well, if you have a charging station that tracks energy usage, you might see occasional spikes in power draw throughout the night, even if your EV is fully charged, but still plugged in. That's basically your vehicle taking a little power from the grid every now and then to ensure its battery pack stays toasty. Warm battery packs not only have lower internal resistance, but are also more energy efficient. 
I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of it here, but the too long didn't read is that the colder the battery pack, the harder it is to get energy out of the pack and into it. And more of the energy you're trying to pull out is lost to heat caused by cell internal resistance. A cold battery pack on a cold morning will not only feel a little more sluggish to drive with, but also be far less efficient than a fully warmed battery pack. Which brings me to the final bit. Charging. The cooler your battery, the harder it is to be safely fast charged. Again, I'm not going into the physics here, but if it's cold out and your EV battery pack is cold, you won't be able to charge very quickly. This is particularly a headache for Bolt EV owners who may find that their car's pretty slow charge rate of 55 kilowatts maximum in summer can get down to as low as 20 kilowatts in winter, primarily because the battery management system in their car is particularly picky about when the battery pack is pitilessly polar. The Bolt EV has no battery preconditioning. I'll come to that in a moment, which also means that you're stuck with an impossibly slow fast charging experience if your car's battery pack hasn't properly warmed up yet. A way to circumvent this if you're a Bolt owner is to try and drive your car vigorously for a good 10 or 20 minutes before you try and charge it. It can help increase the battery pack temperature, which then in turn can help increase your charging speed. Personally, I know with my Bolt, if I try and charge it from cold, it is a pain. But if I've been doing a long distance freeway trip and the battery pack is warm, I can generally get a decent charging rate, even in cold weather. If you're someone with a fancy pants new EV though, another way to improve that winter performance is to activate battery pack preconditioning features when you're heading to fast charging stations. This allows your EV to warm up the battery pack so it's at the perfect temperature to fast charge without taking a massive performance hit. And for most modern EVs, especially with large battery packs, this is an essential feature to exploit if your vehicle has it. However, I should also note that there are two caveats here. First, while your battery pack may be warm because of battery preconditioning, the charging station may be cold and if it hasn't been used recently, it may also limit its charging speeds until its internal components have warmed up appropriately. Secondly, some EVs only allow you to engage preconditioning as a side effect of setting a fast charger as a destination using your vehicle's built-in navigation system. This is a total pain in the butt because you'll need to be at least 10 minutes away for that preconditioning to take effect and sometimes you can forget to set the destination. The only other tips I have, if your vehicle has driver only heating, it can be a little more energy efficient to keep just you warm rather than the entire cabin. And seat heaters and heated steering wheels can also lower your energy consumption. And if you've got an EV with an actual factual heated windscreen with embedded wires in them, that's always going to get your windscreen clear, quicker, and using less energy than trying to heat the entire cabin with hot air. But by the time you're utilizing those tricks, the chances are it is super, super cold out there, or you're actually pushing your vehicle and running out of charge. So yeah, with the knowledge that range will be reduced and that weather can suddenly change, impacting your driving, it's always best to err on the side of caution in winter anyway. But I would hope that you'd do that regardless of the car you're driving and what it's powered by, right? Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them in our Discord chat room on our Patreon page, or you can reach out to us using Mastodon or Blue Sky. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of more than 1,500 people who help fund this channel using Patreon and YouTube, helping us cover our bills, pay our team, and making sure that we can remain 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just under $11 a year. We've had so many headaches with our credit list in the last few months. I'm sorry, it's been down to a non-functioning program we were using to pull the list out. But today's list has been manually generated, so please do let us know if you're not on there and should be. 
we are after all only human ish. A huge welcome to our newest supporters, Steve Abernathy, Mike Nichols, Zach Kane, Philip Atkins, Kat, Rob Thomas, Ryan S, Laura, J. Alor, Celia Gonzalez, France G. France, Nicole Huang, oh yeah, Pedro Huget, Duran Valentin, Winfred Gerlach, John Trindle, Sarah Hendrika Bikerton, Edward Kufka, Stephen Beatty, Jonathan Rees, MJY, Owen Patrick, and Gail Jackson. To join the list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your moment of fame. And remember, you can also now gift membership to someone else. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have an old-fashioned PO box you can reach us at. The address is listed below. And if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store also in the down below. We've got some fantastic comment coming up. We've got some fantastic content coming up, so make sure you're subscribed on Peertube or YouTube and we'll see you very soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we also think that you should look at this one. See you soon and as always, keep evolving!